Hey guys, it's the Fan of Fan Podcast. I'm Ben. And I'm Topless. And for you grand uppers out there, this is for you. And today, we're joined by Ben, the host, co-host himself, Ben Diskin. How are you doing, mate? Hi, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, pal. Good to be here. This is the uh, Fan of Fan Podcast, and we're starting with the co-host. So, Ben, tell me about your, uh, how you got into ground hopping. Well, first and foremost... I'm a Sheffield United fan. Uh-huh. I'm probably not the best of times right now, as you know. Bottom of the yeah. Premier League, two points, can't you win. Top striker's got more points than you as well. <laughs> well, as it stands right now, yeah. <laughs> Le- Lee Smoose, rumours that he's been in a car crash. Crash of Lamborghini. You know, yeah. what can you say? Some, I'll probably not be able to drive in my time. We can all dream. It'll happen one day. <laughs> yes. So... I've supported Sheffield United all my life and I've always been home and away with my brother. Mm-hmm. But in recent times with the League One season, we, we was in League One for six years. Yep. And we had a lot of sort of pre-season friendlies against teams like um, Hansworth Paramore, yep. Works Up Town, mm-hmm. Sheffield FC. Yeah. And the one where Jamie Vardy played for, Stocksbridge Park Steel. Stocksbridge, yep. So... Whilst out and about, I'm going to these sort of grounds and meeting meeting people like I've met you through through ground up in. We'll get into that story a little bit later. Yep. And it, it's sort of a different life to the professional side of football, and I enjoyed it. So over the recent years, as Sheffield United has progressed up through the levels, and we sort of now we play a lot of Sunday games, especially in the Premier League. Yep. That means my Saturday three three pm kickoffs are free. So I thought, well, what better way to spend your time by going to going to a different ground, exploring long league football more. Mm-hmm. So I got into that. I, I went to Hallam FC first. Hallam um, the second oldest football team in the world or club. Yeah. yeah. Well, and <laughs> it's quite funny because when you go to Bramall Lane, you're playing a really nice surface. And then you go to Hallam, and it's a slow pitch. <laughs> yeah, it's on a hill, isn't it? I know it myself. It's on a hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really important to win the coin toss in that game, isn't it, if you're a captain? Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, the, but this is a question. Do you want first half kicking up hill, or do you go second half kicking up hill? you go first half, wouldn't you? I would, certainly. <laughs> well, you get it out of the way. But then again, yeah. is the an advantage of second half being tired and having to kick up the hill? So, yeah, exactly. I agree with you that one first half. Yeah. I mean, I saw the... Uh, we, we, we've all seen the uh, the Warnock documentary, haven't we, a few years ago. Uh, and um, <laughs> like you say, with the pre-season friendlies, I mean, there was one at Matlock as well. So, uh, even teams just outside of Sheffield as well. So, I'm guessing you'll get to see some right varieties, haven't you, with these non-league rounds at the time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've seen some um, non-league rounds where it's, it's still yeah. like a, a four-seat stadium. Yeah, and then you've seen some grounds where it's it's just two two benches, and yeah. <laughs> and a, a few gates so you can't get onto the pitch. Hey, what, what what was your honest op- first opinion of non-league football when you saw it in that aspect in a preseason frame? What did you honestly think of these grounds and this level? Um, overall, I thought it it was a really friendly atmosphere. And yeah, it, it, they're really welcoming. Um, it's sort of an atmosphere where. It makes you want to go back, in obviously at half time and stuff. They do sort of super draws and like raffle tickets, and that's their way of getting money into the club. Whereas mm-hmm. if you're a professional club, it's it's your match, not only a match day ticket. It's oh, I'm gonna have a pint here, and then you you pay money for a pint and a pie or a, and whatever else. So yeah, it, it it was a friendly atmosphere, as you can tell. The football. The quality wise is not as good as professional, but there is some really good players in there. And as we, as I talked earlier, the likes of Jamie Vardy, they've gone through the ranks. Yeah. And even even Chris Wilder as a manager, he's gone through the uh, through mm-hmm. the ranks. He started off at a Sunday League, and then he's made his way up and up and up to where he is now. Didn't he manage so, Al- Alfreton at one point as well? Yes, is Alfreton. Yeah. And I believe Halifax Town. Yes, I remember that one. Then, Oxford. Yeah, Oxford. Then it went Northampton. We all remember how well he did at Northampton, didn't we? Yeah, what, 99 points and got promoted? They won the league in March, didn't they? 
<laughs> yeah, he, he he saved them from. Well, he 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 kept them up and made them a club. Still, he, he saved them in that yep. aspect because money wise weren't good. I, I'm sure him and the players didn't get paid for a long time. Yeah, and then crazy. he got the phone call to go and join Charlton, <laughs> and just as he was just about to go and have his meeting with Charlton, <laughs> Kevin McCabe stepped in, and. For the four seasons, we haven't looked back. Maybe this season it might be a, a cruel one. With I think relegations on the cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but looks that way. We, I think we go again under him. I don't think we get rid of him. I think we go again under him. Yeah, so I think it's always important to back your manager at times like this. Yeah, it would definitely. Be a yeah. Tremendous shame if he did <laughs> break that lowest points record. I don't think he will personally, but it would always be level at him then. And, other clubs, yeah. especially Wednesday, are going to laugh at that, aren't they? Which is uh, quite sad. It's, 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 yeah, I, well, I remember seeing them that season in League One uh, quite a few times at Ramel Lane, and I thought they were fantastic to watch. Very hard working. Well, the system what I had with the right plays, it works. I mean, this season yeah. it's not been the best because Jack O'Connell was very influential on the left hand side for the overlapping centre backs. He's yeah. he's had an injury, which is now out for the season. Yeah, and it's sort of made made like if you look at the stats against Crystal Palace, which was our last game, uh, mo- most of our play now sort of tries to come from the right hand side because you've still got your Basham and your Bongock who know the system well, mm-hmm. but there's no fluidity in the play in that aspect to it. So we we we're sort of now sort of trying two attacking midfielders behind two strikers and then one attacking midfielder yeah. behind the striker and two sort of centre defensive mids. Mm-hmm. We're, tr- we're still ke- keeping like a flat back three and two wing backs, but the other aspects of it has changing a bit. But we just can't score. Yeah, sticking the ball in the back of the net is the hardest part of the game, they say. Yeah, and that's our problem. We, we Against a few teams, so sort of leads, we considered a late goal, but we had opportunities ourselves to score yeah. against West Brom. It was Conor Gallagher, I believe, I'm not from Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was a um, Oli Burke cleared it, he hit it, and it's all he's gone in from outside the box. But then we had chance after chance, and I, I believe Sam Johnson, the West Brom goalkeeper, I might, I might be wrong there, but I'm sure it's him. Yeah, he just had he had a great game, pulled off some great saves. We missed some sitters as well. We're going to lose one nil, and that's sort of been our season. And when you go one nil down mm-hmm. and you can't score goals, it's not really good for you. No, I think some teams as well <laughs> haven't been in the Premier League for a long time, such as yourselves, go through that what we call second season syndrome after having such a very good first season. Do you think you're suffering yeah. with that at the moment as well? Oh well, yeah, definitely. I yeah. mean, a bit complacent. If- before lockdown last, before lockdown last year, don't get me wrong. Our first season, our first season in the Premier League, I thought, all right, I'll take seventeenth and establish ourselves for the Premier League club. Like everybody I spoke to it. would have said that. <laughs> yeah, we've sort of gone backwards. Well, not backwards. We've done the opposite, should I say? So we've sort of in and around the top six until lockdown to come, and then once lockdown come, we progressed. A bit low and finish ninth, but yeah. we're pu- we're pushing for a place in Europe. Even even top four was on the cards at one point, and that baffles me. It was a fan, yeah. And so to see all that and a new season starts, we had a decent we had a decent preseason. All right, you can't really bring much in from preseason because oh, pardon me, it's players getting fit and you know getting back back into it. From each side, so it's not always full strength, but we had a decent pre season, and then, yeah, now we can't score. We're, we're struggling to create. Obviously, we've had a few injuries here, there, and everywhere, but the main thing is we can't score and we can't keep a clean sheet. Mm. So, that's yeah. your problem. It's a shame, <laughs> really, to see, but uh, I'm sure things will get better. But uh, on to um, another question for you is um, when, when would you have? What 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 point would you have called yourself a ground hopper? I would say maybe about two three years ago two, when I first ago. started. Yeah, before that I would have just called myself a fan 
of Sheffield United because I supported them home and away. But now I sort of try and do both. Yeah. And with, with lockdown, it sort of makes it a little bit easier because I, I can't watch Sheffield United live. So mm-hmm. there's only, in, so it's non-league at the moment because you can still get to a lot of those games depending on capacity and tier. So yeah. that that's helped. But I say about two years, two, three years ago, maybe pushing it for. It all started, like I said, going going for a few games with United and he enjoyed it. So I met yeah. one of the lads, he's on the um on the wrong side of Sheffield, he's a Wednesday fan. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> again, we're both we're both doing something we enjoy. You know, watching ninety minutes of football, having a beer, having a having a pie, you know, just soaking up soaking up football and the atmosphere around it and going to different grounds. It's, it's a day out, isn't it, as well, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Even for people don't, who don't out. like football. <clears throat> yeah. I think it sounds. <laughs> well, that that's it. There's loads of aspects of football, but yeah. in, in non-league itself, mm-hmm. you, you see different, you, you see sort of old, old fellas what, you know, they, they, they've got the, the professional team, but they're struggling to get there. So they've now resulted into what non league and they go and watch them week in, week out. And you see, we, you know, the likes of us, what our ground up is, and we're just there to see a game, see yep. the ground, rate the yep. ground like some people do, and yep. move on to the next one. But I, I do believe ground up is a good thing because, especially for, for non league teams, because it means they're getting different people in and. There, there've been some grounds I've been to more than once because I've enjoyed it. I've just not gone to the ground to take it off. I've, I've been to a few, and me going back is generating a little bit more revenue for them. Whether it's me purchasing the ticket or a pint or some food or a raffle ticket, it all goes to the club and helps them in a way. So that's a good aspect of it because when I buy match match day ticket for Sheffield United, I don't feel like I'm helping that much. Yes, it's a bit more. It, it might be thirty pound for a ticket, but. There's thousands and thousands of people what's going to the game, so I don't feel like I'm helping or contributing as much. And then there's, you don't get this like the Sky Sky uh, finance side of it in non-league. They have to generate their money themselves wherever they can. So yeah. I I believe it's always good to contribute in any way you can, especially for your local teams as well. Yeah, and you're helping <clears throat> their communities as well, like their their fan base as well. Go go to get to see a club every Saturday. Or every Tuesday or Wednesday night, whenever else they play, which is always a good thing for them. Yeah, um, definitely. What do you think is one of the another? What's the best thing about ground upping? Would you say? Do you think to somebody who doesn't know ground upping very well, or maybe thinking about it, what would you say the best thing about ground upping is? The experience, the day out itself. So <laughs> you can make the day out however you want. If you like drinking, you can get on a train, find a find a boozer. And maybe maybe walk to the ground, you know, or bus taxi, depending on how close it is to the train station, etc. And how hard uh, it is to get to. <laughs> yeah, and depending on how hard it is. But again, I, you can have instances, even if you have a driver, where what, what has a one or one, two, depending on what the limit is now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe just a shandy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I, and you know, it's just about the experience. Yeah. Again. You get to know a lot of people like like we met through non league. So it's yeah, there's loads of people doing it, and it's a community within itself. Yep, I agree with so, that. So when you go to football, you know what you're going for. It's it's easy to make a conversation. Like when we first met, we were talking about um, how I'm a Sheffield United fan and how you support Liverpool, and then that was it. We we, yep. we, we, couldn't, we, we couldn't shut up in. In our car journey. Oh, absolutely. And then, and then look what we're on now. We're, we're on a podcast. Indeed. So, this this friendship, just the community around it, and the fact that you're helping a team out because a lot a lot of non league teams is they have volunteers. You know, all right, the, the players get paid. It's not probably the best amount, depending what step you go in. But a lot of it is run by volunteers. That's what they do every Saturday or maybe Tuesdays as well. That's what they live for. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good comment there you've made, mate. But what about like, um, what would you say your favourite favourite moment in football that you've seen live? And this could be <laughs> Sheffield United or Ground. I mean, what's your favourite thing you've seen? 
Well, as a Sheffield United fan, the favourite thing I've seen live I can, is... I think I can know what's coming here. Sheffield <laughs> Wednesday 2, Sheffield United 4. <laughs> any any particular moment in that game before I... Uh, um, well... Yes, go. Or the whole game itself? I'm going to say the first 15 minutes because we were 2-0 up and then mm-hmm. sort of... 30 odd seconds after it with 2 2, all the way to end. Maybe skip them, them parts in between. But yeah, so you got Le- Leon Clark, you know, the the boy what played for Sheffield Wednesday. He he come to Sheffield United, and every time he played against us, it was guaranteed to score a pass us. And yep. the fans hated him because of it. He's come to Sheffield United, and I guarantee you now, Sheffield United fans will love him. Sheffield Wednesday fans are going to hate him. He took him. It it took him twelve minutes to score one goal. Yeah, and obviously Flex scored first, so it was a free kick. Um, it looked like it was going to get a, a, a direct free kick, but then a little flick to the side, a little ball roll, Flex shoots, goes past Westwood one nil. I, I believe that was genius a, free kick. By it, the way, yeah, it was a great set up, great set piece. I believe that was like four four minutes in. Yep, and then within within another ten minutes. A ball over. Leanne Clark, you know, does what he does best, puts it into the back of the net. That's 2 0. So, we're in 2 0, you know, as a Blades fan on the top tier at Wednesday, you're going absolute mental. You know, it's just, as, as the football fans say, it's limbs everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then we get we get to the 45th minute or so, and I believe it was Gary Uper what scored the first goal for them. So yeah, I remember, yeah. So you're going into half time, nail biting. Now, if it was still 2 0, I, I, I would have been fairly confident for the second half. But usually at 2 1, and, and you know, you hear Wednesday fans going mental because they scored. Mm-hmm. It it makes second half a little bit nervous. It changes yeah. while the team talk as well. Yeah, it? yeah, definitely. It, it, it's one of them, do you go for it? Do you sit back and try and hold the lead more? Because you've got a one goal lead now, not a two goal lead, so it definitely changes it. And then second half come, second half starts, and you know it's a bit of end to end again. And then next thing you know, I believe it's Ebanks Vandal. He slips. Yeah, uh, don't quote me on that. I, I might be wrong, but I, I, I thought it was Jake Wright. Who, yeah, it who might be Jake Wright. Personally. Either Jake Wright or yeah. Ebanks Vandal. One of them slips, and yeah. Lucas Jow, you know. Goes for him, yeah. fires He's in, it. can't miss. <laughs> yeah, fires it with a lot of animosity and hits back in there. Now, in that moment, I'm looking around and you've got three stands and the bottom tier going absolute berserk. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell has just happened? We've just gone from 2-0 up, now, now it's 2-2. In a game where we could have scored more, we could have been more. There could have been more goals. Before. Could have been three or four nil. The yeah, way they defended in the first half. Was yeah, very poor. Definitely. I mean, there was there was a David Brooks nut, nutmeg for what he passed on to Clark. But, yes. but Clark, you know, fired it wide. There was yep. lots of opportunities, but little did they know. They only could they only could start, uh, bounce for about thirty odd seconds. Now I'm, I'm sure <laughs> most football fans have seen the video, but I'll explain it to you. Yeah, Lucas Jowskos kick off. United do a little little play here, there, and everywhere. Mm-hmm. Now, Mark Mark Duffy come, I believe, he come on as a sub, gets the ball, and he's, he's um he's got Van Akeem in front of him, so he turns one way, turns the other way, turns back the other way. Or as the commentator says, inside and outside he goes, and then shoots. Now, being on the top tier, that ball was going in slow motion to the goal, and mm. as soon as it hit the back of the net, you can just imagine the Wednesday fans start bouncing, and the United fans got absolutely mental. <laughs> oh, mate, I, I just stop going there. I was in the nursery tavern watching this game with a with my flatmate at the time who it was a, it was both our first uh, Steel City derby since moving to the city so I thought let's go out and watch it probably even though he's a Man United fan and um, in that pub when that goal went in it was equivalent of um, what would have been us celebrating Kieran Trippier's goal against Croatia there was plastic cups flying everywhere it was mostly United fans by the way as you can imagine 
It was absolutely incredible. Oh, I, I can I can imagine just from the scene the scene at Bram Lane, and I went into town after the match to to meet up with a few little um, lads who were unfortunate not enough to, to not get a ticket, so they had to go and watch it. And it's just it's just one of those feelings like as Derby Day starts, you you know you're so nervous because you you, you want to win. You know that that the the footballing stakes of Sheffield is up for grabs. You yeah. you either gonna have the bragging rights or you're just gonna have torment. And for ages. And th- this is the first game, first um, Steel City Derby in a few years because they got promoted. We in the first year of League One, we were both competing for second place, which they got, and obviously we then went to the playoffs and fa- uh, failed, missed out on penalties to Huddersfield, so didn't get promoted. So mm-hmm. they've been in the championship for a fair few seasons. They've had their playoffs where they nearly got to the Premier League and again missed out on penalties um, against one and obviously lost in the final with a, a beautiful goal. Yep. So mm-hmm. we, we've had all that. Yeah. So this is our first Steel City Derby in a long time. And again, if, if we go back to the game at 1 0, I was still That's nervous. Nice. At two 0 I thought, yes, all right, yes, we we, we can build on this. We turn up after twelve minutes. At mm-hmm. half time, the nerves then settled again. At two two, I'll I'll still stand by this. I believe if we didn't score as quick as we could, the momentum would have shifted their way. I and agree. I thought that I, too. I thought they're going to win it now, and then yeah. United scored. I thought it's theirs now. United are going <laughs> and, to win it now. And to be two 0 up, and if we did go on to lose. That would have been nightmare. Yeah, but the fact that we scored again as quick as we did, I believe, shifted the momentum back to us, which then made us go on to score again, make it four two, and inevitably win the game. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's one of the best moments within it. Now, yeah. so I thought you were that one. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, along those lines, I've um. Overall, I've been to 102 different grounds. Yeah. I uh, I use an app called Footballogy, which helps track it, which is a good app if you don't have it, by the way. Yeah, I do have it. Uh, it's fantastic. And um, so, as you know, you can track your grounds. And it also tells you sort of where you've been within sort of the leagues. So, I've not completed any leagues yet, but I'm looking to do the um, NCL Division 1 and the NCL Premier. Yep. One of them, one of them, I've done eleven out of twenty, and the other one, I believe, is seven out of twenty. So, sort of halfway through, I will, I will looking to try and complete it this season. But whether or not I will, with oh, we're going in lockdown. We're not in lockdown. We're we're in tier three. You can't go to tiers, other tiers. Mm-hmm. You know, may, maybe push it back. But I'm open to to do them. But yeah, I've I've done some decent grounds along the way. There, I've met some really nice people. So, yeah. um, and, you know, even to the fact that now some of the football teams have been fo- now follow me on on social media of likes of Twitter because it's it's just a friendly community. Um, and one of my other favorites is I've been to three MLS games. Three MLS games. So, <laughs> well, I've been to five. MLS games, but I've been to three different grounds. Three, three different grounds, yeah. Yeah, so I've been... We'll, we'll, we'll make it sound a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. But whilst there, I've been to uh, New York Yankees. Now, New York Yankees? That was, a, that was a weird experience because they've got a baseball... Obviously, they play at the Yankee Stadium, so they've got a baseball field and a football field on mm-hmm. the same sort of pitch. Now... The baseball field doesn't really affect the football pitch, but you can see it, if you know what I mean. So it's a really confusing one, but it's a really nice stadium and it's massive. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, another experience, I went to New York Red Bulls twice. Now, that's a great stadium. New York Red Bulls? Yes. Um, Obviously, you know, there's loads of the Red Bulls around. You've got Red Bull, Salzburg, RB Leipzig. Leipzig, yeah. Yeah, so there's franchises all over with them at the moment, mm-hmm. but well, I've got a bit of a story, a bit of a story for this one. Ooh, do tell. So on my on my first uh, experience there, they have a thing called Audi Club. Audi now, Club. 
yeah, so it's sponsored by Audi, but it's sort of like you're in the executive suite, is probably the best way to put it. But so yeah. you get a meal, you get food. So with this, what what it was is I, I coached in America for a while. So yeah, one of the um one of the people I, I one of the parents of the uh, ch- ch- child I can't get the words out right now. One children. of the parents of, of the children I was coaching was a New York Red Bulls fan, so he had two spare tickets for this game, so he invited me and the other coach I was with. Yeah. So we all went to Audi Club. We we met up quite early, and um, everything there was free. The food was free. Everything was free apart from the beer. So the 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 parent bought the first round, and then after that, I I bought a few more, but. The lad I was mm-hmm. couldn't have any more because he was driving. So, because you're at Red Bull Arena and it's New York Red Bulls, you never guess what they have. Um, well, I don't know. I, I can't guess. Go on, give me, tell us. Lots of different variations of Red Bull. So, oh, okay, okay. What we thought it would be do is all right. Well, I, I, I've I've had a normal Red Bull. It, what's this orange Red Bull taste like? So we, we had this orange Red Bull and you got to bear in mind, you're talking 35 degrees, 40 degrees, whatever it is at this time. It is so, quite warm in New York in summer, yeah. I must say. I so know. We, kept, we kept going back for drinks. So I I had an orange Red Bull. Then for yep. oh, there's a tropical Red Bull. What's this tropical Red Bull taste like? I had that. Then I'm like, oh, what's this yellow one taste like? And then before you know it, I've had like three Red Bulls before half time. And then we 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 went into Audi Club bit at, at half time, and then they have another one. Yeah. And then put a long um, a long story short, by the end of it, I must have had about five, six different Red Bulls. Now, how how I'm how did you feel? Here, <laughs> how I'm still here right now is beyond beyond me because. I didn't have no heart palpitations or anything like that, but I could not sleep. I was just like, I was like high on life sort of thing, but just with sugar. <laughs> we're going to play the second half, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I probably could have, you know. I probably would have stopped. <laughs> all, all this from Red Bull. I mean, it, it was that bad. I went home and then at two o'clock in the morning, I was debating, shall I go for a jog or not? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and that, that's him. Yeah. All that just because of a few Red Bulls. But overall, the game weren't that good. It finished 0 0. It was against um, Seattle Saunders. So, mm-hmm. experience wise, was quality. Football on the pitch, not so good. Yeah. You always want to see goals, don't you? <laughs> Everywhere you go. Yeah. Um, you anyway. That could potentially be the last time. No, actually, I lied. That was, I, I thought it might have been the last time I saw a 0 0, but the Steel City Darvers have been 0 0. They have been 4 2. Yeah, that the was still both. Sit- the still Sittler Dog was the last time I saw a 0-0, I believe, which was a long time ago now. Yeah, <laughs> it is a long time. I hate nil nils. I detest them. But um, well, who's the um, who's the third MLS team you saw? So the third MLS team. This is my sort of favourite team. I, I'd say okay. these were my my MLS team. So I was actually buzzing to get there. It was uh, Philadelphia Unions. Philadelphia Unions. Oh, yeah, or well, Philadelphia Union. So they put at a time ago the Talent Energy Stadium. Talent Energy Stadium. Yeah, sounds right up your street. Any Red Bull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I had lots of energy energy for the Red Bull game, but I didn't for this one. <laughs> yeah. So for this one, again, the backdrop they they it has a bridge what sort of goes behind the stadium, but you can see it um see it within it. So the backdrop, if you sat at the right side of the stadium, was incredible. Mm-hmm. Now, for the Philadelphia Unions, we played them when we played in New York City. So they sort of class it as a bit of a derby. They're not too far away, are they? It's like an yeah. hour and a half on the train, I believe. Yeah. Well, again, drive, driving from New York, uh, New York to Philadelphia is about an hour and a half, two hours. Not too yeah. not too long, especially when you're in America. That's nothing compared to them. Yeah. It's towards so, that. <laughs> yeah. So... We we spent the first half in the, in the allocated seats we got, and we could see the nice spot drop. We got some decent photos there, but then we thought, oh, we're going to move to the other side of the stadium. Go go with the sort of the ultras, the union ultras, okay. what, what, what they called, where all the so- the songs and chants are. So 
at the time, I believe it's 1-0 at half time when we move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, now, in the second half, uh, New York Rebels get a red card and Philadelphia Unions end up scoring, making it 2-0. So, because you were the ultras, as you do at a game, when you celebrate, especially if you're a team, you go absolutely mental. Oh, yeah. And, and if you're on the, next to the, the opposition set of fans, you go absolutely mental while sort of rubbing, rubbing salt into the world. Yeah, you sort of look at them and throw your arms yeah. down, don't you? Like... Yeah, definitely. So, little did I know, you, Philadelphia Union scored the second goal. I went absolutely mental facing the New York City fans. Yeah. So, Next thing you know, I get a tap on shoulder. And I'm just going, yeah, come on, ignoring this tap on shoulder. Yeah. Then I get another tap on shoulder. So I look behind, and it's a steward. So I'm going, all right, mate, what, what's the matter? He goes, um, can you stop celebrating? Otherwise, you're going to have to leave. And I went, but we've just scored a goal. What, what's the issue? I went, yeah, but you're celebrating towards the New York City fans. I went, What's the issue? I said, I'm not doing anything. I'm just celebrating. You know, oh, um, well, you pre- New York City fans are, are known to be very, like, always up for a fight and stuff. So, you provoking, them, <laughs> you provoking them could, could uh, start it. But bearing in mind, we couldn't, we couldn't get to the New York City fans and they couldn't get to us from this. So, it's just, they were just celebrating. They were not effing and jeffing. It was just arms up in air, like, come on. Yeah. But, How'd you do? So I've got a story of I, ne- I nearly got kicked out for celebrating. But my my reply was, well, I'm from England. That's how we celebrate, especially with your next opposition fans, you know. It's just sort of harmless banter. If yeah. they cel- if they scored and they celebrated, you know, they give it back to us. But according according to that, you weren't allowed otherwise you're getting kicked out. So that spoiled, spoiled it a little bit. Luckily, there weren't no more goals, so we didn't have to celebrate. But... <laughs> But it's one of them. It was a great ground. One of them, my favourite MLS team. But yeah. let that out because I celebrated a goal in front of another team. <laughs> yeah, but... one, to tell, one to tell the grandchildren. Absolutely. So out of all these other 100 odd other grounds, do you, do you have a favourite out of every single one of them? Not just in the MLS or England. Do you have a favourite of all time at any level? Um. I have a few. I, I I absolutely love the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Oh, you've been to Tottenham? Yeah, so I've been to the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. As you know, it was the same incident incident where John Luncheon's big toe cost us three points. Yeah. And we had to settle for a drill. We're not getting to that because I absolutely think VAR spoils football. And that's another good good thing about non league. There's no VAR. No so VAR. <laughs> yeah. So, Tottenham Hotspur, it's, it's just modern. As you can t- I, I went to White Hart Lane before it, mm-hmm. it got knocked down and rebuilt in the same. So, but you can just see how modern it is. The outside looks incredible. The inside looks incredible. <laughs> There's the, the still, is it, I believe, am I right in saying it's the cockerel, the, what they have? The golden cockerel? Um, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, so, my, 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 I, I don't know for certain, but yeah. Yeah, so they, they still have that within which you can skywalk next to. Yep. And just the fact now that they, they spent that much money on it, everyone goes absolutely buzzing about these pints, what get poured from the bottom. They, they do that, at, <laughs> can I just say, they, they do that at Anfield. I had one when I went to Anfield yeah. last. But it is absolutely incredible. Takes about five seconds. There's your pint. Bob's your uncle. They are. It's fantastic. But, but what's good as well is the fact that now. It's not just a football pitch; it can be transferred, transformed, sorry, into like an American football style pitch. So they're not they're not ruining the surface for for the football players. Nope, and it's generating revenue for them. Because, yep, absolutely. It, I believe I believe it was Billy and we're talking with how much they spent on this stadium, and the fact that they had to rent Wembley out. They, they've obviously gone through a bit of money, mm-hmm. so if. Over time, they're going to get that money back, which I think is really good business-wise. And especially with that Skywalk as well. I'd, I'd be tempted to do it if I was down there and I don't want to do a stadium. <laughs> so I'd go there and, and do that, mate. And it's a, it's a good way yeah. of making business. Well, 
as a ground up, there is um, a YouTuber called um, Smith. I don't know if you know of him. Oh, yeah. And on the road. You know, yeah, on the again. road. <laughs> yep. Yep. So obviously, it'd be nice to get him on here one time. Mm-hmm. But as you can as you can see in one of his videos, he experiences it. I've seen it, yeah. He, he, he just looks incredible like how you're walking on the outside of the stadium so you can see see what's down and then you're walking, obviously, past the, the goal. I'm going to call it a goal in Cockerell, even if it's not. <laughs> yep. My bad spared fans, if I'm wrong for that. So you're going past that and you can see all of the stadium from up there. It's it's a different angle and it just look, it, it'll look, look really good. Something I'd, I'd probably do as well. Fair play. Is there any um, any other grounds that you particularly like? I I like the Selby Town of um, of the non league. So but Selby Town. Yes. The the reason I like that it's a bit like Maidenhead. So have you seen the the, the stand on Maidenhead where they have the Maidenhead the, Town? The letters. Sort of in the, yeah, the letters in yeah. the black and white. So Selby Town do a similar one. Okay. So with Selby Town, yeah, again, it's I believe Selby Town. It's in red. Yeah, um, that is. But it just it just looks so good. It 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 makes it unique in a way because it's theirs. It, all right, maybe head to it. Yeah, it, it adds personality to it. It gives it character. It yeah. doesn't make it a very dull and boring. Oh well, here's four four stands with seats, and you're not getting anything else. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. makes it stand out more, which is good. Yeah. I like it about that. And I'm going to say Retford, just because of the fact whilst I was there. There Which one? Two. Just Retford FC. Retford FC, okay. Yeah, and the reason I'm saying this is just because of the fact, well, so I was there, it was the Retford derby, and you're talking 2,000 plus fans for this one. And it was sold out that you had fans what was what, what was walking past trying to watch it on the bridge. Now, stewards were moving, moving them away for some reason, but you couldn't watch it on the bridge. You had to be in the ground to watch it. Um, game. Cracking game! It finished five 0 Retford. Retford ended up winning the league that season. Um, mm. They're a cra- great team, but again, just it. It's just different. It, it's unique with, with with every stadium. This stadium's got um, a little bit of a stand. It on one side. It's I now believe because they got promoted, they've had to build another stand. But then they've got a train track. Next to the stadium, so the, the, there was numerous trains coming past, and some trains they thought it was funny to honk the horn at the same time. <laughs> and you know, it adds to it. It, it adds to it. You know, you, you can't go to Anfield and hear a train going doo doo. Yeah, as, as more sellers, you know, having a kick kick about. So every, every game's unique. In their own way, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then same as every stadium, Junie. Every game is <laughs> absolutely yeah. And uh, one, one final question: Which ground in the world is your dream visit? Oof. which ground would you... now? This is a, is the one this you want is a to visit tough one. Yep, yeah, there's so many in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. In, in terms of Europe, so I'm gonna say Europe base here because I feel like. Europe based, I've got more chance of doing it okay. now. I'd like to try, try and do the San Siro, but I may just miss out on that because I, I know sooner rather than later that's going to be de- uh, demolished. Which I don't think it should. I think even even if the two teams do move on, it would, it would be such a good sort of I can't think of the word right now, just, just for the city of Milan, it'll be good just to keep as a memorabilia so, yeah a me- like a memorabilia side of it well we've got till 2024 i believe yeah so i believe they're not like to demolition and i'd like to do the yellow wall of brushy Dortmund. i think that would be absolutely unreal to be part of yeah i agree on that one totally yeah totally. so they're, they're they're two of them but Again, I like to go to some stadiums just for the atmosphere, and I like to go to some of them just because the ground itself looks absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. So, I, I'm gonna I, I, gonna be a bit more realistic within myself and sort of stay, say like Europe ground because I feel like I've got more chance of getting to them. Mm-hmm. That's a so fair point. They're, they're, they're the two I'm gonna stick with. Okay, dokie. And why not? Anyway, so Ben, it's been uh, it's been fantastic. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm it's, sure been a, we're gonna... it's been a pleasure to start this podcast. I'm sure we're going to enjoy the road. 
Yep, guys. This is the first episode, but like you said, we're going to have more guests. We're going to make it much more better. So don't forget to listen and and come back week in, week out. Yep. This is for you, Ground Hoppers. Anybody who's interested in joining the podcast, we'd love to have you and hear your stories. So, uh, Ben, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll be back again soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.